top of the hour this ushers us into that is good morning uganda agenda where we usually have our guests in studios and our lovely viewer you're able to be part of this segment by giving us feedback on the topic of discussion tomorrow is world anti-corruption day and all this week there has been a series of activities as we gear up to this day aimed at creating awareness about corruption but also finding means how better we can fight corruption but also at the same time assessing how far countries have gone in the fight against corruption now today we want to discuss that is uh, corruption as the major driver to uganda's rising debt as we speak our public debt is at exactly uh, 71 trillion shillings that is about uh, 19 uh, that is about 19 us billion dollars so it is something really big and uh, of late there was an organization that came up with statistics and indicated that maybe each ugandan is owned if we are to pay this about 1.5 million with me in studios i have christine being who happens to be uh, the program manager uganda debt network that aims at creating awareness on how best we can manage our finances as a country. Christine, you're most welcome to our studios this morning. Thank you very much, Robert, and good morning, viewers. Mm. Well, it's a pleasure hosting you once again. Uh, Christine, let's begin uh, by understanding Uganda Debt Network. How do you involve yourself? What is the connection between your organization f and fighting corruption? Because most of the times we've seen you in terms of budget allocation, in terms of uh, calling for pardoning of our uh, public debt. This time round is corruption. Where do you get into the picture? Thank you very much, Robert, once again. And uh, Uganda Debt Network is a policy uh, organization it is um it was created in 1996 to lobby for debt relief because our debt as a country had spiraled out of control and indeed we achieved the debt relief under the highly indebted poor countries initiative that was hippic in 1996 where the imf and world bank by that time uh led uh, the campaign and we achieved about 95% uh, forgiveness from, the, from, the, from those uh, lenders. But also later in 2006, under the Multilateral Debt Relief Initiative, where we saw Uganda uh, get 100% relief from uh, her creditors. And so as a result of that relief, uh, we, we were able to, to go back to about 1.4. 1.5 US billion dollars as our national debt and of course plus the domestic de debt then which was about uh, 1.4 US billion dollars so I would say we started off in 2006 at about 2.9 US dollars uh, in billions that is uh, of debt and so after that forgiveness one of the conditionalities by the way for the forgiveness was that you channel these resources which you are supposed to pay back mm. channel them to address the domestic situation the poverty levels uh, in education in health in the agriculture sectors so because uh, these multilateral lenders their major focus is usually around social sectors, improving the social sector. So that is why, that is why it was um, a little easier for us to get that relief because the conditionality was that you address the poverty situation. And so having done that, Uganda Debt Network now channeled their efforts into monitoring the utilization of these resources yeah mm. having created the poverty action fund the path where mm. these resources were put we said let's uh, empower the communities let's empower the citizen to be able to follow up the use of these resources so that they are not uh, lost or misused and so Uganda Debt Network uh, came up with two key programs which we implement and through which we, we, we implement this mandate. Uh, first is the community empowerment and engagement program where we directly interface with the communities. We have different structures in uh, dis different districts, uh, not the whole of Uganda, yeah. about uh, 25 or so. Mm. 
and uh, we have trained uh, what we call community-based monitors. Oh. These ones are the ones who go out and do the monitoring of government programs, then they generate reports of their monitoring findings and share with stakeholders at oh. the different levels, at the sub-county, at the district, even at the regional and uh, sometimes mm. if the issue... So there's a trickle-down effect exactly. uh, to this. Now, Christine, this mm. brings me to the issue of corruption. Yes. Uh, since then, now our public debt has gone to, that is, 71 trillion. Yes. Uh, that is a big uh, figure. How did we get to this? Yes. Um, one... The country has, uh, of course, desired to grow. Yeah. As we look to grow, as we look to expand our economy, we want to, and, and, and the funds, of course, that we have are not enough. So ultimately, we have to resort to borrowing, uh, whether internally or externally, but we had to borrow. Now, uh, when we went to borrow externally, uh, most of our uh, of our external loans were usually from the multilateral lenders, like I told you, the IMFs, the World Banks. But these ones usually the the, the loans are cheaper, mm. yeah. But they're they are not they are concessional. Mm. But they do not give you so much money that you want, and yet we wanted to invest in huge infrastructure projects. Mm. So what did we do? we resorted to the lenders that can give us the amounts of money that we want, that will not limit us. And so that is when we started moving the non-concessional or commercial way, which in itself wouldn't be bad. I think that wouldn't be bad. The problem is how you use the money or the, the, the loans or the debt that you have acquired. So that is the biggest problem because these uh, non-concessional loans, like uh, I've told you, they are quite expensive because the lenders will give you as much money as you want. But there is a, 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 a profit-making uh, arm to and Interest it. is a bit high. There is interest, mm. yes, because you're getting a lot of mm. money uh, and you're paying in a shorter period mm. of time. And so we have to be more careful with some of these funds because if you misuse them, then the price to pay is a little higher than uh, if, you had, uh, if you had stayed uh, concessional. And Let's so look at the connectivity now with corruption because we know all countries in the world go for loans. Yes. Uh, if you look at the United States, uh, actually in terms of debt management, they could be doing better, but their debt is much higher than what we have in terms of uh, hitting the ceiling. So why is the connectivity? Borrowing saying it's not a problem. So is the element of corruption in Uganda's borrowing. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, just like you said, mm -hmm. uh, the U.S. has much, much mm -hmm. more debt than we are talking about. But you know, uh, the IMF uh, usually releases uh, economic updates on different countries. And some time back, and that was about uh, 2016, they found out that for every dollar that is invested in Uganda, only about seven tenths uh, mm -hmm. is generated in economic returns. That is uh, for mm -hmm. Uganda. That is even less than a dollar, less than what we have invested. But for the U.S. Uh, that you've talked about, up to about 2000, 2001, for every dollar that was invested, six dollars worth of economic investment was generated. So uh, with that background, it is possible, therefore, that if you invest your debt properly, you're able to generate the desired economic returns and therefore sustain your debt or pay your debt uh, ably. But what, have we, uh, what has happened for our case, because we see we are, we are, we are investing much more in, 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 in our economy, and yet the return is not as much as we would have desired. So we have to struggle to be able to pay back this debt. That is why our debt has continued to grow. And in fact, uh, Robert, if you remember our, our national budget, mm. yeah, usually a bigger portion of our national budget mm. goes to servicing debt. Yes, debt servicing. Exactly. Mm. And why is that? The revenues that we generate uh, URA was saying they were able to realize uh, 19 trillion for the last uh, uh, year, financial year. But even with that 19 trillion out of the 44 trillion budget that we mm -hmm. had, 
we see the biggest portion, over 70% going oh. to debt repayment. Oh. We had 35% of, the, of that money of the budget going to debt servicing. You have your interest payment in there, you have uh, amortization, and by the way, uh, like we shall see later, domestic debt refinancing, which is uh, borrowing to pay back a loan. That took the biggest uh, chunk, uh, still under debt repayments at 8 trillion shillings. So what are we saying? If we have to even get to the point of borrowing to pay back our debt, then that means there is a problem somewhere. The debt we are acquiring is being mishandled somewhere and we are not able to generate... Uh, I'm interested, uh, Christian, to hear from you or to better understand mm. at what point is this debt mismanaged? Because when I look at government policies, you find that usually government, when it goes to borrow, most of the borrowing does not bring direct returns. I mean, if mm. government borrows to construct a hospital, we've seen most of our roads, government borrows to construct roads. Mm. Recently, we had the Entebbe Express Highway, we have to be paying back, but it may not directly be like I'm borrowing for a business. Mm. That yes, I'm going to buy maybe this breed of dog. I expect in this period it will have delivered and I'll be giving birth. Mm. So at and will be giving. Then I'll be selling the puppies. Uh, so let's better understand at what point because this is when we can empower the public to mm. be more conscious. It's at this stage where we mishandle our debt, where the element of corruption comes in, and this is how best we can fight it. Mm. Thank you. I think it is at uh, different stages of the debt acquisition and uh, management processes. Uh, some of us are more conversant or familiar with the implementation stage. Yeah, uh, We've acquired this loan and we've sent it to maybe the local government and uh, we've brought a project. Maybe we are constructing a road and we tell you uh, this much has been sent to the local government for this so kindly monitor. Uh, we've seen the, the, the Minister for Economic Monitoring, uh, Peter Ogwang, is going th around the country and exposing some of these, you know, um, uh, corruption, key corruption issues, broken bridges, uh, where we've spent so much money. But that is at one stage um, of this, where this corruption comes in. We also have to look at the acquisition stage. Sometimes, we have gone ahead to acquire this debt. Uh, and of course, we go and negotiate with us through the Ministry of Finance and ETC. And then we acquire this debt, we are given the loan, before we are even ready to mm. use the funds. So at the point of acquisition, before we even go to negotiate that loan, are we sure that we are able to absorb it? Is it necessary at that point? Because we have seen many mm. cases... You get a loan, then you have to... Com they give you the money, yes. you have the pay back time begins, you've not compensated people on the land. Exactly. Where the road has to go through. Exactly. We've mm. seen that, especially through the Auditor General's mm. reports, and they are really good reports that he produces, where we have gone out and borrowed monies. And by the way, uh, these loans also have conditionalities. Usually, there's uh, government of Uganda has to provide counterpart funding for that loan. And so the lender will usually tell you, maybe I'll give you a percentage, uh, and then when you have fulfilled some of these conditions, you can take the rest of the percentage. So if we have got maybe 40%, and uh, the 60% has remained. So we have to be paying interest, but we are also um, spending uh, in terms of having this debt uh, protected because ideally it is our debt, mm -hmm. yeah? It's our loan. But because we haven't yet picked it, it does not matter whether you have taken all of it or not, you have to pay the charges, you have mm -hmm. to pay interest on this loan, and remember, now you have started doing the preparations of compensating these people on the land. It takes two, three, four years. And so you find uh, over the years, the debt that you committed yourself to take uh, has not generated any returns. You have not started on the project four years down the road. You have uh, maybe paid 
around you know trillions and trillions of money in commitment fees for them to keep their loan for you and uh, sometimes the debt expi the, the the time mm -hmm. for 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 the Service project no life yeah. expires without you having even maybe started started yes mm -hmm. and so we have mm -hmm. to pay and you have to pay this loan mm -hmm. but who pays it me and you and uh, every other taxpayer so it is up to us to always push government and that's why we are in this uh, advocacy because we have to push government we have to show them what we are losing mm -hmm. as a country those that are, are charged with uh, with with uh, uh, fast tracking some of these things we have to show them that uh, we are losing really mm -hmm. we are losing as a country mm -hmm. yes well our viewers just remind you that you can be part of the topic of discussion this morning by simply going on our social media platform and more so of late we have our whatsapp number where you can also send an sms message the traditional sms and i'll be reading them out the number is on your screen 0709 60 25 92 0709 60 uh, that is 60 25 92 please send in your whatsapp message or your sms and of course on our various social media platforms we'll be reading them and my guest in studios will be answering that as we look at the fight against corruption most of corruption a key driver to our debt burden as a country every country borrows actually most of the countries even the developed world do borrow but how do we use this money how do you ensure the intended purpose for this borrowing is fulfilled to benefit Ugandans? What are some of the gaps that we can close or we need to close to ensure there is value for money? Uh, Christian, there's always been this big, uh, this question, disturbing question on many Ugandans' mind. Is our public debt burden still sustainable? <laughs> Thank you. Um, whether, well, you could look at it in the immediate term, short term, long term. Uh, well, according to the Ministry of Finance oh. and government tells us that our public debt is still sustainable. But uh, you know, um, we have already exceeded the 50% uh, debt to GDP threshold. I think we are now at 54. Recently when Parliament was passing the 3.8 uh, supplementary budget, they noted that uh, after that borrowing, because we did some borrowing domestically of about two trillion, they noted that uh, while even when the Ministry of Finance has promised us that um, in the immediate term we shall still uh, go up and uh, peak at about 53% uh, debt to GDP ratio in 2020-23, but we have already hit 54%. Uh, uh, debt to GDP ratio. So the sustainability, well, in the immediate, um, medium term, probably yes. But some of us see that um, we are getting into the danger zone. That is if we haven't yet uh, approached the danger zone. And then uh, the debt to GDP ratio also is, is uh, a bit misleading. Uh, some of us would prefer to take the debt to revenue ratio because you're paying against the debt. The revenues is what you're paying. What you're collecting is what you're using to against pay. Against the debt. Yes, yes mm -hmm. that is a more, I, mm -hmm. I would say, accurate measure. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see our revenues, we are not generating so much to be able to pay off the debt. If anything, what we are generating might mm -hmm. only be able to pay the debt. Mm -hmm. And then what happens to the other social service sectors? Does that mean the economy has to just sit and work for only uh, paying debts? Has a, in connection to that, has our debt uh, service yielded any commensurate to the country? Uh, not, re not really. Mm. We see we are acquiring so much debt mm -hmm. and then the commensurate return mm. is not there. Just like I told you, invest one dollar, but you get less than one dollar out. Mm. So you do not have, you don't, you do, can't even talk about profit mm. if you can't raise even just the money that you that you injected into that uh, project mm. or, or program. Mm. So commensurate returns in regard to debt, no, mm. we haven't seen that.
Mm. Well, we are still discussing that is the anti-corruption week, but with emphasis on corruption and its connection to our increased debt burden as a country. Of course, recently there was a research that came out and indicated that you and me, each Ugandan is owned. You have to pay 1.5 million if we are to ensure that we clear off our public debt. And one of the areas uh, Christine is talking about that, yes, we have a challenge because we mishandle most of these funds. And at the end of the day, sometimes we put the cart before the horse, which makes it a problem. You get a loan, repayment time begins, but the project for that loan has never started. What does that mean? At the end of the day, there won't be value for money. You still have a huge public debt Yet because of corruption, corruption is not necessarily only swindling or taking money. It also involves mismanagement of offices because we quantify that in terms of money and get the figure that how much have we lost because of people, technocrats, not perfecting their role, not doing enough research. We got this data and it's quantified. Like maybe we've lost about two billion. So when you talk about corruption, we look at it at, on a large spectrum of various areas that have to be handled. But let me look at some of the messages that are coming in this morning regarding corruption. Please not call this line. Uh, here we have, okay, however that, okay, this one says, however, to end corruption, such funds just need dramatically regulatable penalties to the corrupt. Yes, it says uh, we need to have tougher rules uh, or laws for the corrupt in this country. Otherwise, it is something we shall be talking over, over and over again. Mm. Good morning, Uganda. Does it mean that Uganda does not have her own money for development rather than depending on loans? If the whole government depends on loans, what about her citizens? This is Okunzo Filmon from Arua City. Hmm, Christine, what an interesting one there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then, uh, let me read this. Oh, please, let's make these messages a bit short. Uh, corruption has totally reined the economy of this country. All parameters. Omicron should be an excuse in... Omicron shouldn't be an excuse in any way. Uh, malaria kills, but he's, I think he's just trying to give more uh, how corruption has been a danger and it's everywhere in our country. According... To him, mm. uh, okay, one says, good morning, UBC. Uh, well, he's just uh, enjoying the show. Thank you so much for enjoying the show. Thanks for the show. I'm Bukenya Francis from Chotela. The thing that is bringing about the large debt we have is the frequent supplementary budgets Parliament is passing each day. Uh, thank you, Bukenya from uh, Chotela there. And uh, here we have uh, government officials are responsible for corruption. So the solution is to handle them correctly. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's first go with some of these messages that are coming in, Christine. Mm. Handle them. We have one who is wondering, why are we depending on borrowed money? Don't we have enough money? If government has to do that, then what about the citizen? Mm -hmm. Then we also had uh, a friend from Chotera who said, punishments. What are we doing mm. in terms of the corrupt being handled or disciplined or do we have mm. weak laws what aren't we doing right mm. yeah thank you and uh, I, 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 I relate uh, with uh, them with uh, the, 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 the members that have sent in the messages uh, punishments that is one of the of the of the things or the reliefs that we could take uh, uh, an opportunity to implement but like we have seen that the laws in Uganda regarding uh, corruption uh, are really rich. I would say we have um, such a rich and robust legal and uh, institutional mechanism to fight corruption. And indeed, uh, we've seen them work in some instances, but they have not been effective. We have the laws, we have the institutions, but we lack the implementation. The institutions are not independent sometimes to you know to exercise their mandate and so that is the drawback with corruption we have seen a few people get away with it even when they have been implicated and uh, that is what has uh, made corruption non-risky in uganda because you have had impunity 
those that take the biggest chunks of money go off scot-free and they do not pay back this money so mm. all that burden mm. is shifted to the taxpayer and um uh, w something else I, I, I noted from uh, the contributions was that the supplementaries are also responsible for increasing mm. our debt. And indeed, yes, that is uh, rightly so, because we see with each year the supplementaries are growing. We had about, I think, two trillion last year, but this year now it is 3.8, almost four trillion. And the most painful part about this is that some of the items in the supplementary are consumptive and yet we are borrowing the biggest part of this uh, supplementary like i told you about two trillion was borrowed domestically to fund this supplementary so wow. if you're borrowing to to consume we all know that you will not be able to recoup any money you're just borrowing to consume we had um, cars for ministers about six billion six or six yeah about six billion for that we had uh, payment of wages we had mm. compensations but all these are items that were foreseen and could have been planned in the budget process the pfma the public finance management act which is part of the laws by the way that we have uh, says that if you have to get a supplementary, please subject it to some of these, um, or, or subject it to some tests. Mm. Is it unforeseeable? Is it, um, was it, you know, at the time that you, you were, it came up, that item, is it possible that it could have been planned uh, yeah. for the normal budget mm. process? Or is it so inevitable that you cannot even wait to forward it next, to the next financial yes. year. Well, let's but also still look at some of the messages uh, that are coming in. Uh, we have here, good morning, Uganda. I'm watching from here, Kapchora. That minister, she's not a minister, <laughs> is doing good work. Right <laughs> now, most of them who work in Kapchora, they have taken inside. They are still here. Please help us seriously. Okay, uh, I didn't get you, my brother. Very well. Then, uh, if they have a team monitoring local governments up to sub counties, why is it that local governments are too corrupt? Is she aware? That is a retired Captain Chitaka Mayanja. He's talking about corruption at local government uh, and asking if you are aware of this. Uh, good morning. Thanks for the show. God bless you. Kwesho Fred from Sironko District, Director Stiford High School in Sironko. Thank you uh, for always watching. And we have a, a very good model. Let us improve on public accountability to avoid corruption. Corruption in Uganda can stop if only the promoters are brought to book publicly. Okay, if they are brought to book publicly, then we have a... Uh, government should first touch the big people like the PS says of different ministries, because they are the most corrupt people uh, if we are to curb corruption in Uganda. Well, no research backing that, uh, my dear brother, but I th these are views that are coming in uh, from our viewers. If my boss forces me into corruption case and I refuse, then he uses his office to interdict me. What can I do? That is a question to you. Uh, finally, for now, I'm proud to be Ugandan. Our fellow Ugandans are planning to reign you, Uganda, and maybe go to Mars, leaving Uganda dated. Getting a job in Uganda requires you to borrow money and also to pay later. For now, let's handle mm. this. Mm. Mm. We have issues local government. Yes. Uh, um, like we know, of course, we have uh, different types of corruption. We have petty corruption. We have grand corruption. Grand corruption involves the huge sums of monies. Mm. And then petty corruption could even be the 1,000, the 5,000 you give maybe to the traffic officer to let you off the hook. But uh, all of it is corruption petty or grand, it is all corruption and um, it is not good for our country because by the time you're involved in petty corruption, given the opportunity to be in the position 
uh, for grand corruption, then that means you would take the advantage and still carry out the grand corruption. Granted, we have corruption at the local government level, a lot of it. Even at the central government level, our, uh, our institutions uh, as government, unfortunately, have, have, have uh, also fallen prey to this. There's a lot of corruption, even in government institutions, in the processes, in accountability. Um, and so what can we do? As a citizen, one, it is your duty and your role. You do not have to just sit back and fold your hands as you watch this corruption taking place. Actually, William from Busoga uh, yes. just sent in an SMS message. He says, don't call it corruption. It is thuggery. <laughs> that is William from Busoga. Yes, it is theft. Sometimes, mm. you know, I'll come later to the, to mm. the, to the COVID-19 mm. um, loans and how they were utilized, the theft, yes, uh, that was in there. But uh, like I was saying, if you see, if you witness some of these uh, corrupt tendencies taking place, there are still some actions that you can do as a citizen. Uh, and one, we have the Whistleblowers Protection Act, which you can take advantage of. Why not whistleblow? We have the IGG, the institution of the, of the Inspectorate of Government. You can whistleblow on some of these... Uh, on some of these um, uh, officials who are corrupt but you can also go through some of these uh, organizations the civil society organizations we have tried our best to work with citizens with the communities to show them what to do and how to do it so uh, someone was saying that if his boss forces him to to do some corrupt you know and if he refuses then and he interdicted yes he interdicts him Take advantage of the Whistleblowers Protection Act. Take advantage of some of these civil society organizations and we shall make sure we follow this through up to the, up to the last person who is the, and, and uh, the Inspector General of Government, uh, the, uh, Honorable Namisango Beti Kamia, seems to be, you know, so energized Very energetic and, and determined. You know, yeah, this is mm. the time at mm. which you want to engage some mm. of these people so that they take on these issues, you mm. know, uh, very energetically. Mm. Yes. Oh, well, uh, time is not so much on our side. Thank you, Charles, from Fort Potro City. He says that I think we should stop talking about corruption because mm. actually those that talk about corruption are themselves corrupt. But I want to tell you none of us is corrupt. At least, well, let me have your final shot. Yes, my final shot is that uh, we have had, we have lost many funds mm. to corruption. We have borrowed a lot and uh, instead of uh, generating some commensurate returns, mm. we have lost it out. Mm. As an example, the Auditor General in his reports quotes that just for COVID, uh, for response to COVID, we borrowed up to over 4 trillion shillings borrowed in loans. But when you look at the monitoring reports first uh, by the Budget Monitoring and Accountability Unit in the Ministry of Finance, then later by the Auditor General, you see that there is a lot, a lot we need to do as a country. You remember the tents that were procured and were blown away by the wind? Yes, you remember um, there are so many contracts in there that... So examples are endless. They are endless. There is so much. Mm. So my call is one... Let us, uh, let us implement the laws. The laws are rich, they are sanctions. Let us implement them without, um, without selecting. Let everyone be subjected to the laws, but also to the citizen out there. We are crying of corruption. Do not lose hope. I know sometimes access to information is a challenge, but do not lose hope. Please participate in monitoring uh, the programs that have been put in place because if you do not do that, then we shall lose out so much in corruption and you will pay, I'll pay as taxpayers for what we are not benefiting from. Thank mm. you. Thank you so much, Christine uh, Vidingiro. That is from Uganda Death Network for having found time this morning as we gear up for tomorrow's celebrations of World Anti-Corruption Day and Uganda will party to this and this uh, celebrations. It is upon you and me to end corruption. Corruption requires a giver and a taker. There is of late syndicate corruption. If you say no to corruption 
I say no to corruption, then those with corrupt tendencies and minds will have no one to be their accomplices. Let's all stand up for the future of our country. A corrupt, free Uganda is possible. And to government and the judiciary, let's not have selective justice. Let all face the wrath of law as the laws indicate. With that, we shall bring this cancer, this pandemic to an end. Have a lovely day. Ruben is here to take you through the sports updates. And later, I'll be here in Good Morning Uganda Extra. God bless you. Stay safe. Live from UPC Studios in Kampala, this is Good Morning Uganda.